Hey guys, Mr. Zigner here. We're looking at Lesson 7-7, Sales Tax and Discount. In this lesson, we'll be finding the total cost with tax. We'll be finding the sales price after a discount. And then if we know the sales price and the percent we saved, we have to backtrack that and find the original price. That's going to be a little tougher. Make sure you're watching carefully on Example 3. So here we are, our main idea. Clearly, we're solving problems with sales tax and discount. All right, getting started. So a set of three paperback books sells for $35, and the sales tax is 7%. What is the total cost of the set? That's important to understand what we're supposed to find. So we're not just finding the tax, we're finding the total cost. All right, there's two ways to go about this. I'm going to lay both of those out before you so you can take your pick of which one you like better. All right, the first one is just to take the price and multiply it by that 7%. Then what we're going to do is add that tax to the original price to figure out the total cost of the set. Here's what I mean. Let me bring up a calculator. So we take the $35, we multiply it by the 7%, that's our tax, and we get $2.45. 2.45. $2.45. Now notice that's actually the choice right here, but it turns out that's not our answer because, again, we're not just supposed to find out the tax. We were supposed to find out the total cost of the set. So to finish this up, we need to add that tax to the original price. Come back to the calculator. We'll, even though we could do this in our head, we'll add the extra $35. And there we go. $37 and 45 cents. So there's our true answer. But now I did say I would show you a second way to do this. Let's get the uh, calculator out of the way. And here's the second method. Let me change colors here. You take the same $35, but now this time, instead of just multiplying it by 7%, we're going to add that percent to the whole 35. Now, let's see, percent-wise, 100% of 35 is 35. So really what I'm going to do is multiply 35 by all of 35, which is 100%, plus the tax on it. So the tax is 7%, plus the 100% of the 35, which is a total of 107%. So now I'm going to multiply that 35 times 107%. And now if you watch this, we're going to get the answer in one step. So 35 times 107%. Now to make 107% a decimal, that would be 1.07. And there's that final price in one step. So there's a second option as far as how to solve a problem involving sales tax. Either multiply it by the percent, then add it to the original price, or instead of adding the tax to the price, first add the 100%, the full price of the item, to the 7%, and then multiply that by the original price, getting your final answer in one step instead of two. Okay, here we go. Alex wants to buy a DVD player that has a regular price of $175. This weekend, the DVD player is on sale at a 20% discount. What's the sale price of the DVD player? All right, let's just show you this using that first method I did on the previous slide. So you take the $175, and we're going to multiply that by the discount they're giving us, which is 20%. That's going to get us the discount that we're allowed to take off of the regular price of this DVD player. So we take our 175, we multiply it by 20%, which in this case would be 0.2. There's how much our discount is. Now notice, there is an answer choice with a 35. Is that right? No, it isn't. That's just the discount. 
that is not the sale price. They're asking for the sale price. We just figured out the discount. Now, what does that mean we have to do? Well, now we go back to our original price of $175. And now, since this is a discount, it's an amount taken off the price of an item that we're buying. Now we subtract away the 35. So let's clear this and 175 minus 35. And we end up with 140. So there we go. Our discounted price is $140. Let's move on. All right, now this is the one I said to pay a little more close attention to. The rocking chair is on sale at 15% off. If the sale price is $318.75, what was the original price? Okay, now this one's a little bit more of a handful. So there's a rocking chair. How about R for rocking chair? And if we multiply that by 15%, we're going to figure out the discount. And then we're going to need to take that original price of the rocking chair and subtract the discount. And that's going to end us up at this $318.75. Well, how are we going to figure this out? Because now we have these two variables and an original price we have to figure out. How do we backtrack this whole problem and figure out what the original price was? Well, let me show you an interesting way of how I would like to solve this. Let me erase this first so I have room. OK, now if something's on sale for 15%, 15% off, what percent do you still have to pay? Did that make sense? If you're getting 15% off, well, what percent do you still have to pay? Well, 100% is the total that you would have to pay normally. But we're going to take away 15% of the price. OK, well, 100 minus 15, don't think I need the calculator for that. That's 85. So this is what you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay 15%, but you do have to pay 85% of the price. Normally you pay 100%, but if they're taking 15% off, you still have to pay 85%. So now watch this, what I think is an interesting way of doing this problem. So how about we stick with that R for rocking chair? Now if I multiply the price of the rocking chair times this 85%, that's going to equal the $318.75. Now, does that make sense? I hope so. The original price of the rocking chair times 85%, that percent that we do have to pay, is going to equal this new sale price. All right, well, if R times 85% equals 318.75, we can sort of undo that using division. Here's what I mean. So right here, we have a variable being multiplied by 85%. The opposite of multiplying by 85% is dividing by 85%. But now I've got to do the same thing to both sides of my equation. And so I'm going to divide this side by the same 85%. Obviously, these two divide out and equal 1. And 1 times r is just r. So we have isolated our variable. It's all by itself. Now let's bring up the calculator to help us finish up. So let's move that over so I can see what I'm doing. 318.75 and we're dividing that by 85 percent. That would be 0.85 and that gets us 375. And there we go. So the original price of this item would have been $375. And there's our answer. Now, but does that, did that make much sense to you? Well, let's check to see if I'm right. Now, I knew the original price. That was the thing they gave me, the $375. And I needed to figure out the sale price right here. If I wanted to figure that out, what would I do? 
Well, according to some of the previous problems, I would have multiplied that by the 15%. Whoops, 15%. Let's let the calculator do that for us real quick. So 375 times 15%. There's that 5625. And then what would have been our last step? Well, we would have taken that 375 and subtracted our discount of 56.25. So 3, whoops, 375. 375 minus the discount of 56.25. And there it is. There's that 318.75 that they said the sale price was. So to summarize that again, if you need to figure out an original price and they told you the percent off that they took, what you really want to do is figure out what percent that you did have to pay by subtracting it from 100. Then you set up your equation. We had our variable times that percent that you do have to pay, and we set that equal to the sale price. Then we do a little bit of inverse operations, dividing by the 85%, which is the opposite of multiplying by 85%, and then the calculator popped up with that original price for us. And there we are. We've made it to the end of sales tax and discount. This one might be worth watching a second time just to make sure you caught everything that I was trying to get across to you, especially that example three. My students should complete the questions below this video on my website. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the seventh grade math connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzigner.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.